Well, hello everybody. Oh my goodness. You're going to not believe this crazy story I have to tell you. Um, but it will explain why I'm jumping on seven or eight minutes late. <laughs> but you know what? I'm here. I'm happy to see everyone. And what can I say? Except it's never a dull moment around here. So let me grab you on the screen and see who's going to jump in here. I think people are already jumping in. I see some comments. So hello to everyone. Um, so here's what's happening. It's chilly here. And um, I went to turn the heat up before I came in here. Um, and when I was walking, you know, I was walking over and it's just a wall unit. It's not um, fancy. It's not a fancy wireless unit. And anyway, I, I shocked it. You know what I mean? When I touched it, I shocked it and, um, it died. <laughs> the thermostat just died. So it's not the power. It's the thermostat itself. But you know what? You're going to love this. Here's how committed I am to you. We're going to do this live. And then somebody is going to watch really um, carefully and tell me when it's eight o'clock and then I'm gonna leave. And um, then I'm gonna run up to Home Depot and I'm gonna buy a new thermostat. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm still, I was like trying to fix it and stuff and then I was like, I literally think I killed it. Um, but I finally found a reset button on it and I pushed it about 10 times. So anyway, I'm sorry. We are going to have to dispense with formalities, aren't we? But a little formality. So as you can see, this is Lisa Harden coming to you from Boise, Idaho, which is going to be kind of chilly tonight. So um, a, ther a thermostat is going to be essential. And um, but you know what? In the meantime, we are going to have fun with lots of creations I made. And I think you're really going to like them. Uh, we are going to focus on the heartfelt bundle. So that includes the Heartfelt stamp set and two punches. And it's a great bargain, I think. It's in your mini catalog. And anyway, um, yeah. And then someone, like I said, somebody's going to be my timekeeper. And I will stop at 8 o'clock uh, because that gives me an hour to go up there and get a thermostat. Or check myself and the dogs into a hotel for the night. <laughs> Oh, brother. But you know what? No rush. We have time, right? Okay, let me tell you first. I got some beautiful things from people, and we are not going to go past. Um, no matter that if we're in a rush, we are not going to uh, miss these. Okay, so look at this, first of all. Is this not gorgeous? It's a bunch of little, well, like um, rhinestones made into a beautiful little llama. I think it's so adorable. And, um, oh, nice, Katie. You're going to do a class Saturday with this bundle. Perfect. So this comes to us from Jill Peterson. And look at this. It's a it's an easel card. Um, it's gorgeous. Jill, I think you know from now, um, from seeing a few of Jill's cards, Jill likes to go really advanced on her cards, doesn't she? So I would love to be at this cafe. I think it's so cute. And that's a window, and then there's cardstock over it, the topiaries and all this. Life is better with you in it. That's so sweet. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Right back at you, Jill. I think exactly the same. So anyway, Jill sent this to me a few weeks ago, and I think it's just stunning. And look at the awning. It's even kind of popped up here. It's just beautiful work, Jill. And, um, you know, I was blown away by your Christmas card, which was the Christmas card, everybody, that was in Mary Merlot with the gold embossing and the deer on it and the storybook fold, I think it's called. So, um, anyway, that was really fun. Thank you so much, Jill. Oh, good, Leslie. I'm glad you got your Christmas card. And so, obviously, you made it home. And, um, hey, thanks, Katie. Yes, I've got some, um, got a little glimmer going on, don't I? It almost looks like gold foiling. Ugh, the things they have nowadays. 
So, um, also, I got this really cool card. Gosh, I love this set. This is from Vicki Hevner. I think that's correct, Vicki. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's Hevner or Hevner. Um, this was, I don't know, it may have been called from our house to yours. But I love this card. Isn't it great? And some of that bird ballad paper. Um, looks like it's on uh, probably gray granite. Anyway, I really like it. It's it's just so cute. And this is a set that I'm hoping to work with, not for classes, but for something else. Another little project I have, because uh, I really like this set. And you can see how charming it is, right? Obviously. And she wrote me a great note. So cute. And then inside, just that the cutest little uh, tree with heart. It's adorable, Vicki. Thank you so much. You have great, great stamping skills. You got good stamping chops. I have very talented friends. John I. Ross, you're included in that for sure. You've given me your own masterpieces. Yes, you have. I just got to like try and keep up with you guys. I can hardly do it. Okay, so what I focused on again was the heartfelt stamp set along with the poppies, uh, mostly the DSP. But so we have these, um, let me show you in the catalog. We are going to use some, like a couple of the die cuts, really this like swirly die cut we're going to use. And we're also going to use a few things from the Peaceful Poppies Elements. You guys, this is a great little add-on. It's $6.50, and it has, um, well, just what it says, little elements that go with the Peaceful Poppies. But if you look at them, we're going to play with um, some of these. These are on vellum, so they're white designs on vellum. Okay, I hope you can see that. There's two sheets of those. Then there's two sheets of this, which are matte and glossy black, and all of these things just pop out. There's two sheets of these cardstock uh, pop outs, I guess, if you want to call them. And then there's two sheets of these, and this is on watercolor paper. I'm trying to hold it so you can see. It has white. It's like if you stamped on watercolor paper and then used, the res used it as resist. That's what they've done for us here, but it has all of the designs of the poppy stamps. So um, for $6.50, you got all of these little different images to add to your creations, and uh, they're gorgeous, even better in person. So I highly recommend getting that. Like I said, just as a little add-on, a little final gift to yourself for the hard work that you do, I, um, I'm giving you permission right now to get that. <laughs> Hi, Brene. How are you doing? Okay, so I had all these cards stashed here. I am so glad I got a ton of stuff done last night. I was like, no, just sit and get, get it all ready just in case. And then, of course, I blew the thermostat up because that's how electrified I am. That's how hot I am, ladies. I blew it up. <laughs> I'm still kind of shocked, frankly. Um, first of all, I sat there and looked at it for about five minutes. So, okay, I'm going to see if the glare is too much on this. If it is, I'll take these out, but it causes such a ruckus, crinkling noise. Um, so these were from a swap I did with um, Rhonda Wade's business development group. And of course, I have more swaps than this. I have like 20 swaps, but these were the ones that I pulled that were using the heartfelt uh, papers and just anything from the suite, the heartfelt suite of products. This is beautiful. I love this tiny thin mat that, okay, let's see who did this. First of all, this is Stampin' Amanda, Amanda Edens. So I love that she used this thin, slim mat. I don't even know if it's an eighth. It's probably an eighth of an inch difference. Anyway, so I love that. It's just enough to pop it up from the white. And she did use dimensionals on that centerpiece. Along with that beautiful red satin ribbon. We used this in class last week. I think everyone loved it. And um, then, of course, this cute stamp. And both of these are punches. So, like, how easy was that? And I very eye-catching, isn't it? Okay, here's another one. I think this is from my bud. Yeah, this is from Anne-Marie Heil. So uh, I give her 
mad respect. She does some beautiful work. And here is a great example of that. She has used, uh, I can't remember the embossing folder that this is, but I think it has a poem on it. It's probably from that pressed petals suite. So anyway, she's used that. I hope you can see that to add extra texture and interest back here. And then just use the paper and those faceted gems that are so like kind of curious and um, definitely have a lot of sparkle and shine to them. And um, put that up on real red paper. And then here's another one. This is Claudia Bradley. Claudia, beautiful work. Um, same materials, but again, something a little different. She used the tiny stitched nested dies. <laughs> I don't know. Stitched nested label dies. There we go. Um, Jen's favorites, right? And um, this is beautiful. And in fact, Jen used this detailed hearts die last night and made all different types of cards with it. And we did not plan our themes to be so close this week, but I think it's totally fitting, right? I mean, we're in the season of hearts. We're getting ready to make Valentine's. But um, as she showed you last night, and as I will show you tonight, it's not just for Valentine's Day. It's just a great everyday set to have around uh, because they become they become a great for almost any theme. And then here's a really cute one. Actually, I'm going to open this. Cheryl Whitmer from Wasilla, Arkansas. I believe that's Arkansas. Um, let's take a look at this because it looks like a fun fold, right? And it is. Look at that. Now we've made a variation of this, haven't we? We've been in love with this with this kind of a fun fold for months. So, um, but she actually took this right out of the DSP and then she stamped on the middle because the outside is foil, but the middle is like a white cardstock that you can stamp on. So anyway, super cute, Cheryl. Love it. And then she's used some of the red gemstones. Those are in the annual catalog. You can get a whole sheet of just red. And I'm always surprised at how much I grab those. Um, they are real red, technically, but I think I used some tonight. Yes, I did. And uh, to me, I can't tell the difference when you put them with uh, Poppy Parade. So I think that they're both colors. Both They work with both colors. Now let's see, what are people telling me here? I see all you lovely ladies coming on. Hello, Karen. Nice to see you. And Bridget. Nice to see everybody tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. Hello, Donna. Hey, Kathy. Love to see your name popping up. Oh, you're, hope you're doing okay. I know, Roz. Who's counting? But as I explained. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, Roz. It's 9 o'clock where you are. Luckily for me. I'm a couple hours behind you. I have a little time. <laughs> yes, these are bling nails. They were very fun. Okay, so I have three cards for you tonight. First, before um, we jump into this, I will give you a friendly reminder that one reason why I'm using this set is because Jen and I are offering right now a retreat in a box. And you can get two different, co two different combinations of it. But basically, you can order... Um, one option is $100 or $115 with shipping, but it includes a lot of product. More than half of the cost is just in product. So we're not, we're, we um, didn't mark up the product at all. We're just passing it on at the cost that it would cost you in the catalog. So it includes this is the basis for the class. And then you get some, some of everything out of the suite. Uh, you get some of those gems and then at the end of it we give you 10 card bases so you're going to make you're going to um, get recordings on facebook for five different designs and you can make you'll have supplies to make two of each of the designs okay so that's how you get 10 cards and we're going to have two pillow gifts in there, which are just little surprise gifts. And then also, the product in there, while the product that you're buying doesn't total $100, um, we are going to give you two 
celebration choices. Um, really anything you want, except if I'm shipping it to you, I cannot send 12 by 12 paper. That has a totally different um, and much increased shipping cost. So anything else, you can choose anything out of the celebration catalog. If it's available, you can have it. And so basically you get an extra celebration choice with this too. So please take a look at that. It's on my website. Um, if you subscribe to my email, if you don't subscribe to my email, please let me know and I will get that to you. Or you can always just call me. Remember, 208-830-6328. You can just call me old fashioned or text me. And um, if you are your own demonstrator or don't want to buy the products or already have the products, you can substitute and get the same perks or you can just buy the card kits. So the card kits are $30 and um, plus $8 shipping. So I hope you're excited for that. I know we're excited to do it. And like I said, um, we're going to give you a lot of different designs in, in that class. Um, but I'm going to show you three more tonight. So anyway, here are those faceted gems. Aren't they fun? You get these in the class. Oh, they're beautiful. And we don't piece them out. You get um, a full package of them. So anyway, here's the first card that I put together tonight. What do you think about this? This can be anything. This can obviously be a, be a Valentine. They could be a birthday card. It could just be a friend or thinking of you card. It could be a get well card. Um, I probably wouldn't do it for a sympathy card, but I don't know. Why not? It has a heart on it. And it says from my heart to yours. This is all straight from the, the stamp set. So let's put this together. And it's fairly straightforward, as you can tell. Um, thanks, Roz. But I wanted to show you these, these little, these, um, these vellum poppies. Okay, so let me get, see, I even had my papers cut. Oh my gosh, I was so organized. I must have known something weird was going to happen, right? <laughs> it was in the air. There's something in the air. I don't even know why I was so staticky. Um, I work at the power company. I should know a lot more about electricity than I do, but just rest assured, I zapped that pretty good. I zapped it. It was gone. It wasn't. It's, there's no coming back from that. Okay, so I have a beautiful um, piece of pool party, or I should say a beautiful piece of pool party. Hi, Lisa, nice to see you and Cappy. Yeah, Julie, an anniversary card. I love that idea. I know, wasn't this fun? Um, you know what, Jill, I really just chose this, again, from the Poppies DSP, so the Poppies DSP. Um, this is a piece of it. And this is the back side. And then of course it has it has Poppy Parade in it. So I was like, well, we're gonna use Poppy Parade. And so then <clears throat> that's our background. And then um, this is our I went ahead and did an insert in here. You could just stamp straight on um, Poppy Parade, but you know. Most of the time I like to add an insert. It's just, it's just a little special, a little extra special thing. Um, and it's not always white though. I definitely don't always use white. I think that the inserts, I think it's just one more kind of like layer to surprise people with. So keep that in mind. Don't always use white or vanilla for the inside. It's not necessary. Now I'm gonna glue this one down first. And then we're going to add some of this really cool lace ribbon to our second layer. Now this comes from the annual catalog. Let me see, what's it called? Scalloped Lace Trim. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory, huh? I actually think, yeah, this is in very vanilla, but you know what, it's not, it's very interchangeable. It's, see that, it's, it just kind of picks up the color that it's on. So I don't think it clashes with Whisper White at all, but it goes seamlessly with vanilla. So it makes it nice and versatile. So what I did on here, I didn't like, I know you don't see a lot of it, but it still adds. I actually did a double layer. Um, 
I thought a single layer just looked too thin. So there you go. So um, I'm gonna just measure like two pieces of this. Where are my silly little scissors? Okay. And all right, I've got two of those. And let me see, I was kind of messing around with how I did this. This ribbon sort of has a front side and a back side. Um, I can tell because it's more detailed. The scallop is more detailed on one side than the other. So that's all you're really looking for. Now I am going to put three glue dots. Okay, so I think I just put it down like one layer at a time. Sorry, I was like holding it next to me, expecting you to expecting you to follow those instructions. Let, here, let me hold it really close to me so you can't see anything. <laughs> okay. And I probably put it down on the bottom third of the card. Uh, again, that's your choice. Where you want, you're going to have the heart going over it. So where you want that heart, just know you need a little room underneath it, obviously, for um, the bottom part of the heart. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. And let's get the, at least that first, the first glue dot put down, right? And then um, just wrap it around. This is all gonna be hidden in the back. So no need to be too clean back there. You wanna, you wanna make it even, but um, it's not anything you're ever gonna see. No one's ever going to know how this is constructed. So, hey, Jen, how are you doing? And hi, Elizabeth. You know what, Elizabeth, I was late myself. Uh, you will see in the comments. So, um, no worries. No worries at all. And, um, okay, so then what I did here was I just, what do I want to say? I staggered them. Right? So that, let me stick this down and then I'll bring it up. Um, I frankly think that this would really be pretty just with a sentiment over it. And then you could really see the ribbon. But basically, so I staggered the scallops. So it just kind of makes the ribbon look like it's thicker than it is. I don't know. I thought it was cute. It gave it a little more body. The heart was a lot, a lot bigger then it did, I think it the ribbon needed to be bigger. So what's the name of the DSP? It is in, it's either Painted Poppies or Peaceful, Peaceful Poppies, Designer Series Paper. So um, this is the back side of it. Yeah, this is like the B side of the DSP. Isn't it gorgeous? Ooh, I love it. Okay, so in sticking with our color theme, we're not going to go outside of the box very much on this one at all. We're going to use some pool party. Let me spin this thing around. Spin the bottle and find that pool party. Okay. And actually, we used this set at my class. And darn it, the ladies are going to be so mad at me. I forgot to bring out this paper piercing mat. Um, these stamps definitely need it. You get a much better image. Um, you know, that happens a lot with photopolymer stamps. But in particular, I think because like on this one, there's so much that gets inked up that, um, oh, man, that was gripping. Anyway, there's so much that get, gets inked up that you need a little bit of give underneath it to really uh, soak that paper. You weren't seeing the comments. Oh, I hope you can see them now, Katie. You know what? There's kind of just a weird, you know how Facebook is. It's just weird sometimes. And also it depends on if you are watching on the iPad. And also if you have your camera portrait or landscape or your monitor or whatever. So it's all, it's all variable, isn't it? That's what keeps it fun. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but... What are you going to do about it? You can't fight City Hall, so you surely can't fight Facebook. Okay, so here's the scalloped edge, edge punch. Beautiful. Goes with this 
great. So what I'm doing here, when I have a multi-layered thing like this, I just pick a few points and I um, match those up and then I know the rest of the stamp is going to go pretty good. Okay, so on this one, I am going to make sure that the top little point here and the bottom point are where they need to be. And once I have that, I can stamp this out and I don't have to look at everything else. Okay, because you will never, if you keep trying to look at all the different points, you will, you'll lose, <laughs> what do I want to say? You can't look at all of the points. So just know that you just pick a few points on your image and then punch it out. And that I have up on dimensionals, wherever, wherever those are. Here we go. Ooh, look at this, Jill. <gasps> look at this hodgepodge. Jill and Jen, they are going crazy looking at the way I take these off. I just start in the middle. Can you believe that? I just pull them off of the middle like a, an animal. <laughs> so anyway, pretty funny. Um, yeah, I heard, even they were talking about Alberta on NPR today. They said that... It was so cold that both Celsius and Fahrenheit were the same, and apparently it was minus 44. That's where that mathematical magic happens. Anyway, I, I do not want to experience that. I have no care to experience that at all. No, thank you. So, Amy, I'm, I'm giving you mad props, and I certainly hope your thermostat doesn't go out. Okay, so see? We're building, we're building. Now, remember those little elements I told you about that don't look like much? We're going to get a couple of those out because that's what these are. They're vellum. And um, <clears throat> you can make them any color you want. You can leave them plain or you can make them an actual color. Uh, so I'm going to take one of the large ones and one of the small ones. And they have so many different designs. They have several sizes of the poppies and... You know, you get the idea. And then I'm going to take the Dark Poppy Parade blend. And I'm going to color on the back side of these. Now, by the back side, I mean the side that doesn't have the white um, outlines on it. And you just have to kind of feel it. Because the white is slightly raised. Um, it's something that you probably can't see on the camera, but you can see in person a lot better. So anyway, and then I just colored them. Nothing that special. Let's see here. I don't know that I want Poppy Parade all over myself, but you know, I don't think it's going to stick to these nails. I don't think anything is going to stick to these nails. Okay, and you don't have to be careful with it, and it doesn't look streaky when you finish it. It is really cool. Okay, and then here's our little one, our little kind of profile or half-opened poppy, right? And um, I let those dry for just a couple of minutes. It is alcohol, but um, they're fully covered, so we'll just give them a little... I knew I had that paper piercing mat out for something, right? Yes! See, it has multi-uses. Everything has multi-use in the craft room, it has to. All this Stampin' Up! stuff has multi-use. Okay, so then, I feel like the light looks weird. I'm sorry if this doesn't have very good lighting in here today. It's very, very dark outside, obviously. And um, I don't know. Other than that, I mean, what else could go wrong around here? Jeez. So I'm just gonna kind of look at the last one I did, and I'm gonna put, a glue dot where I want to put it on the heart because I have it half on the heart and half on the heart and since it's colored the glue dot does not show through at least I can't see it so don't really worry where you put it if you're really concerned about it hide it behind this white part in the middle but again um, you don't see it it's hiding um, because we have all that poppy parade ink and so I've just kind of put them off center there. And now that can go on our card. 
Um, let's see. Pat says you can't wait. I wonder what you can't wait for. Maybe you ordered this set or something. Sorry, I only saw part of that. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing tonight? Nice to see your name pop up. Um, I haven't seen that Kim. Kim's probably skating. Remember, she told me last week she wasn't skating. And um, I canceled the live. So she's probably being a Canadian tonight and doing her skating. Um, but somebody tell Kim that we missed her tonight. Maybe she'll catch us on replay. Now, like I was telling you about those little red rhinestones. So you get a whole sheet of them. And I just keep them in a little stash here. And um, as you can tell, these are supposedly real red. But they go with the poppy. They're fine. No one... Well, I can't tell the difference. So certainly a non-card member, non-card maker is not going to notice the difference either. Yeah. So we're just going to pop three on there. And um, I think this is quite pretty. And again, call it what kind of, whatever kind of a card you want. You know, we also have, this is a set of sentiments that are new. They're in the mini catalog in the um, Peaceful Poppies suite. And you could use any of these sentiments too. Aren't they great? The mix of fonts and, um, you know, the sentiment for this card's on the inside. You could use any single one of these and it would go. Let me see. Let me make sure. Yeah, I think you could use every single one of these, right? Okay, so back to our card. I just need to stamp the inside. And I'm just going to stick with Pool Party, right? We like it. So we're just going to stick with that. <laughs> oh man, you guys are talking about those dimensionals. Hey, you know what? I'm, I don't have time to be going through row by row. I, the creative genius cannot waste time doing that, okay? I must strike out and be, be crazy. And that's probably the craziest that I get in my life. <laughs> Otherwise, it's accountant. It's accountant, true and through and through here. Okay, just a little. Oh, let's see. Well, this one says, so lucky to have a friend like you. Again, it's seamless. You can just change these out. And I do send a lot of friend cards. So that's perfect. A little green glue action. You can, of course, use snail interchangeably wherever I'm using green glue. Maybe not for um, the sequins. That's not a good interchangeable thing. But otherwise, you can use snail if that's your deal. And that's gonna go in here. I was I like to cut my mats a little smaller too. Um, there, this is three and three quarters by five. And then I'm gonna take the old handy mono sand eraser and see that little mark right there. Um, it's some poppy parade. Because when you're working with Poppy Parade, it's one of those colors that likes to jump onto plain white cardstock, isn't it? And there we go. Oh my gosh, so cute. I really encourage you to do this. It's prettier in person. Is that... It's always hard to show you like exactly what it kind of looks like. These especially, I really encourage you to get those and just color them. I'm sure you can do other coloring techniques. Oh, thanks for the hearts. Love it. Very fitting and I love it. But um, these are just super easy to color. You saw I didn't have any technique to speak of and I love them. So two cards to put in your stash for any time you need them. You could even leave the middles, you know, sometimes I put them in my stash with no sentiment on them. And then I can, I can do whatever I want, whatever I need. And then basically you just stamp them in less than five minutes. You can have, have the card addressed and, and out the door, right? Okay. Here's the second one. What do you think of this? More Peaceful Poppies DSP. These are elements. This is just black cardstock. I made a black heart. Ooh, I love it. But um, this is DSP from the Peaceful Poppies, as I said. This is Rich Razzleberry card base. And Rich Razzleberry is in this DSP. We know that really easily. They've done a really nice job of um, 
showing us all of the different colors that are in each of the suites. So you know it a couple of different ways. You can see it in your catalog. And also when you get the paper, um, there is a back piece of card cardstock or cardboard, I guess, press board, and it will have a label and it will show you the colors as well that are in the DSP. So then it makes it very easy for you to pull coordinating colors. So anyway, I just did that, Rich Razzleberry, for both the heart on the front. And then I took some vellum and cut out this beautiful swirl. You know, we've had some of these swirls in the past. And this one's no exception. It's just so handy. So this is also in, I really tried to stick to these two, the Heartfelt Bundle and the Peaceful Poppies Suite. So this is one of the die sets in the Peaceful Poppies suite. It's called Painted Labels. I had to write that down. I can't remember all of this. Peaceful Poppy, Pretty Poppy, you know, I'm trying. Just know that it's with the poppies, okay? And hi, Pam, nice to see you, and Julie, of course. I think I said hello to you when you first came on, but, oh, Pam makes a good point. Ladies, I don't have any, you don't need to contribute to the cards tonight because I do have the layouts. However, here's your work, because you have to have work, right? Because um, Stamping Zoo goes by the Tanstoffel principle. Does everybody know what the Tanstoffel principle is? Tanstoffel principle is there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> and uh, I was taught that by an econ professor of mine long, long ago. And I still, I've never found that to be untrue. So anyway, here's your payment to me for learning these cards. Please share if you would like. You don't really have to. But if you like are liking this and enjoying it, please share it with your friends. Let's bring them on. Let's, you know, the more the merrier. And also... Um, if you would like, again, totally voluntary, but you are very welcome to leave me um, a personal review or a comment on my Facebook page. I welcome that. And um, I always welcome the opportunity for constructive criticism and the opportunity to get better. So, um, you know, if there's any of that, you can always talk with me about that kind of stuff. So that's your activity. And then your other activity, of course, is that you need to talk with each other, but you're already doing that. You already knew that part, right? So, okay, we're gonna make this pretty little card. And then I put the arrow on the inside in black because I was just like, we were using black. And um, so I wanted to kind of finish it off with that. I love it. I love that arrow, it's so cool. Okay, so let's put this one together. It's very straightforward. Um, again, that little black scalloped piece that came from the elements. And you get several of those. You get six of them. Okay, and I didn't even use a whole one on that. I started, so I started to put it across the whole card. And I'm just going to show you this so you could see and make your own decision. But I don't know, there was something where I was like, no, nope, I need to cut that shorter. It was too overwhelming, I thought. So anyway, um, just keep that in mind. Things don't always have to go the full length of the cardstock to be a little piece of interest. Uh, I know we do that. We do that often with our ribbons too, but I just needed to remind myself. Okay, so I've already cut out this little vellum of course, you can cut this out. We're going to use it um, on the next card in a piece of cardstock, but isn't it fun? It's really great. And um, of course, this technique is really useful when you have a piece of beautiful DSP that you, you want to have something on the front of it, but you don't want to just cover it up. So anyway, um, let's take our base. We've got, again, Rich Razzleberry base. And Rich Razzleberry is a good color. First of all, it's Razzleberry. That sounds good already, right? And then um, it has a lot, it's, a, it's one of those dark kind of red colors. So lots of things pop right off of it. And I love how they've incorporated it into this GSP. It's not overwhelmingly raspberry, <clears throat> excuse me, but it definitely has it in there. The other colors in this paper, in this particular one, are Flirty Flamingo, Blackberry Bliss, 
another one of my favorites. Uh, I think that's it. And black, of course. Now the back side of this paper, let's see, I don't remember. Oh, it's that same one we used. Okay. There are several papers that have some poppy design on them, so I couldn't quite remember. Now we do have, Jen and I, have an online class coming for the poppies. Jen designed the cards for that, and I'm sure you're all excited. I sent out several card kits um, yesterday to the Americans. Um, you could still sign up for it with me and I would make you a set, no problem. But um, our deadline is drawing near for that. And the Canadian post is a little bit slower than the US post. So um, Canadians, if you're thinking about doing that, you need to sign up with Jen Stat. I'm just using a little bit of snail on this. All of this is gonna be hidden, right? Back behind the heart. So we don't care. We don't care what the middle looks like. It doesn't look horrible, but um, yes, Roz, I sent you two. Roz invited a friend. She's, she's, I mean, do you mind me telling? I usually don't like to talk about people. I'm sorry, um, but this is a good thing. So Roz um, purchased a kit, a online card kit as a gift to a friend. I thought that was really fun and creative, right? So that's one thing that they can do together. And, um, you know, have fun. It's a, it's like a gift of an experience. I always think that's much more fun than just a gift of a thing. Well, this is both things, I guess. So, um, Roz is my favorite Fl Floridian. Roz and Gary. Now, is it really, is the, are the extra cards for Gary, Roz, or is this for another stamper friend of yours? I think it might be for Gary, but he doesn't want to admit it. He might be embarrassed. Gary, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. If you're a stamper, be proud of it. <laughs> okay, we're going to use this one that's stitched. Oh, so fun. I love it. I think it has a real modern feel about it. Now, I think we talked about this last time, but when you have a photopolymer stamp that's so thin and wiggly like this, the cool thing about it is you can manipulate it on the block to change its shape, you know, within reason. Okay. But the bad thing about it is if you want it to be as it is, you need to leave it alone or you can pull it out of shape and then it won't fit the punches and the dies and stuff. So the easiest way to do that, of course, is just to lay it down flat side up and then take your block to the stamp, not the other way around. Uh, okay, we need some black. When in doubt, just get the old memento out. Now, I do like Stazon. It's definitely more black, but Stazon requires a special cleaner. And, um, I don't know, I'm just feeling kind of lazy. So, we're not going to use that tonight. My go-to really is memento. Stazon smells good, though, I'll be honest. I know that's a little warped, but it's true. It smells like, I don't know, berries or something. <laughs> or gasoline. I get those two confused all the time. Okay, <clears throat> so it's been pretty cold here. I'm not, you know, not Alberta cold. Um, but yesterday it was pretty chilly. And then today it was 50 degrees, so go figure. But yesterday when it was chilly... Um, a really odd thing happened. I found that, oh my gosh, somebody had peed on the bathroom rug. I mean, the bedroom rug. And it wasn't me, people. So, um, you know, you can narrow it down. So, um, I got to steam clean that. And then, of course, the, whoever the perpetrator was, both of them were very interested in that area. You know, and, um, <laughs> God, I mean, they were like sniffing it. And then I would say to them, Oh, did you do that? Are you the one who did that? You know, Cassie, did you pee on that? And he just, he would look at me like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't smell anything. And then Tango, of course, same thing. And they go, Tango, did you pee pee on the rug? No. And then they just kind of look away. I don't know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> okay, somebody asked me a question. Uh, I've noticed my memento is a blue shade. Well, that's kind of weird, Kathy. Um, hmm. I almost think that's not good. If you have the reinker, I would say try and reink the pad. I mean, I could see where a black that maybe didn't have enough ink would look a little blue. Um, I don't think I've experienced that. Yeah, Roz, right? Wasn't you either? Boy, it's funny. Nobody knows who peed on the rug. We just know that someone did. Um, it's all fixable. They weren't in trouble or anything. I don't want you to think they were in trouble. They only get in trouble for fighting or for waking me up. Then it's on. Uh oh, my screen froze up. So, oh, there we go. Um, okay, now we just need a piece of black cardstock, just a scrap, so that um, we can punch out our black heart. In design only, okay? Not functionally our black heart. Oh, so pretty. I love it. Okay, someone asked about stays on. I'm sorry. Yes, Gary, are you eavesdropping? Gary, you're my second favorite for Floridian. That's hard to say. Um, and I hope you're doing well. I heard you had the flu a couple weeks ago. And I was worried about you. I didn't think that you would be able to watch the show. But um, you're here, so that's great. I'm glad. And you probably need to buy your wife some extra crafting supplies this week. I think that would be a great idea. Um, thanks for sharing, Pat. Okay, let me get back to the stays on question. I'm so sorry. Oh, it keeps cutting out. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's see here. I'm so sorry. Okay, listen. Um, I shouldn't get caught up in that. Just know that, okay, tonight, after I get back from Home Depot and get heat to the house again, um, I will be going through every single one of your comments, and I will answer your questions. I see, Maria, you want the dimensions. Not to worry. These are going to be um, a blog post. So this weekend, I'll put together a blog post with these cards, and they'll have all the dimensions and stuff. Um, so you can recreate and make your own little masterpieces. Um, now this is just card, this is card stuck on the back, um, this little scalloped piece. So it doesn't need any extra anything. Again, snail would work fine on this too. We're going to use some glue because that's just how I'm rolling these days. And then, oh, and then I need to glue this together. So these are sized. Oh, did I already do that? Must have. These are sized perfectly to um, kind of nest inside each other. Uh, or you can use them separately. And also, as I mentioned before, when we were looking at the swaps, um, you can cut out designs in the DSP. So don't forget about that DSP. It's absolutely gorgeous. One side of it has a lot of foiling. And um, anyway, just really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna put this heart just so it's centered in, it just happens to center really nicely into that swirly die cut. Isn't that neat? But if I were just looking at anything, I guess I just want a little bit of my design to go on both sides of the scalloped piece. And then finally, I have some rhinestones. And these are those great rhinestones that are carrying over. Uh, let's see. I'm, I might be using Noble Peacock. Oh, that's probably what I'm using. So I'm using Noble Peacock. I thought I was using the Holiday Rhinestones, but you know what? I bet that I could get some of the Holiday Rhinestones to work. Um, but I'm using these rhinestones right here. Now, of course, you can't see this off to the side, but um, I have a little avalanche of product over there. So um, my take your pick tool was basically buried. Oh gosh, this is so, you know, do you ever get sick of looking at the rhinestones? No, they're so gorgeous. Those might not even be the ones that I used originally, but I love them. Oh, gotta have it. Love it so much. And then I need an insert. Right? We've got to put that arrow on there. Now, Jen was using the arrow stamp, I thought, so um, cleverly yesterday. 
So Jen, that was super cute how you were using the arrow yesterday in your designs. I wonder where I put the white. Uh, it might be in here or it might just be, let's see here. I have a lot of card, uh, a lot of white inserts cut, so not to worry. Let me see. Well, now I say that, right? And crickets. We're going to cut one real quick. I need to get this paper cutter out for something else in a minute anyway. You are going to love the third card, you guys. I love it. I didn't necessarily mean to save it like the best for the last, but I really like it. So we're going to do a three and three quarters by five insert on this baby. And we're not messing around. We've got our beautiful little, uh, I don't know if even if you can see it on camera, but I've got the new paper trimmer out and I really haven't stopped using it since I bought it when it was available to demonstrators. Now it's available to customers. It's 25 bucks. I highly recommend it. You know, it's almost, it's like the perfect size where it's very portable, but um, it's also just a good stable size. And, okay, so I need my arrow now. Let's see. Where is that little guy? Here we go. And again, lay your lay the arrow down on your grid paper or wherever you're working. And then put that on top. Or I bet it's very hard to get that straight. And um, I don't think Cupid shoots a crooked arrow. That might look kind of that might be kind of weird. I'm sure there's a story about that. Okay, and then I just put it on the bottom. You could put it up the side, however you want it. However it works for you. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Look at that image. I love it where these feathers are, but they're just dashes. Oh, who thought of that? So clever at stamping up, and darn it, you just make me get it all, don't you? If I didn't love it so much, I'd be angry, but I could never be angry. This is like some of the best therapy in the world. I um, have needed it throughout my life during highs and lows, right? Oh, okay, look. Wow. Two more. Very fun. Actually, yes, I do think these are different. I think I got these from the holiday pack of rhinestones. But that just shows you, you can just grab whichever ones you want. And there were also some purple ones. Thanks guys. There were also some purple ones and you could just as easily use those. Or you could take clear rhinestones and use them clear. Or you could color them with your black um, Stampin' Blend. I would use the dark one. And then you would have like these, these reflective black rhinestones in there. Hi Nancy, how are you doing? Yeah, Crooked Arrow, story of my life too. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's okay. Now, Tango, I see you over there. Tango got in the closet. Now, of course, you know what's in the closet. Um, I don't think Megan's on here. Where is Megan tonight? It's her Friday morning. She must be running around. If she were on here, she would tell me to just let the dogs have all the toys. Um... And to see, to see our house, you would think they have all the toys already. But I have an extra stash in the closet in here. Okay, now we're going to do a fun fold with belly band. Do you want me to show it to you? I'm going to show it to you because I love the patterns. And again, this is the DSP from the Peaceful Poppies. And we're using the same kind of components that we used before. Is this not gorge, though? Look at it. Oh, Old Olive Mossy Meadow coming straight from the DSP, right? And then I did just like a black and white inside. I thought that was really um, just kind of sharp and just really special. And then I used my favorite sentiment, being friends is better than eating candy, but let's do that too. And then inside I wrote, I used the stamp that's so lucky to have a friend like you. Now let me explain that one for a minute because it's the final sentiment. So there's two sentiments in this stamp set. Roses are red, violets are blue. So lucky to have a friend like you. Those go together. 
but don't these go together too? What I used, or I'll, I've already used this stamp just alone. So lucky to have a friend like you. So even the sentiments kind of interchange. Yeah, it's really cool that way. So let's put this card together. And again, there will be, um, this is a standard card size with a standard belly band, but I will put um, the measurements on the blog. Okay, and I can see right here, um, there was a tiny bit of glue on this. So again, I'm just gonna take the mono. You don't wanna rub too hard because you do, you know, it's sanding away a little bit of your cardstock. But if you just have like a small blemish to take off there, good enough. Thanks, Karma. Love it. Oh, it is pretty, isn't it, Pam? It's just using, it's just taking advantage of that DSP and then just pulling all of the colors. So let's get started on this. Now I have a half a sheet of old olive and I'm going to score it at two and an eighth on both sides. Let me try and put that in the corner up there. I want you to be able to kind of see how I'm scoring this, but um, I don't think you're gonna be able to see the bottom of the trimmer where I'm working. Just know that, okay, so I'm putting this in and then we're going to score this at two and an eighth. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to score the other side at two and an eighth. So you're making the front flaps of the card. This is still, like I said, it's still half of a piece of cardstock. So you're not using any more than you normally would use. And then those just get folded in and then they meet in the middle, right? and have a little fanfare when your person opens it. It's like double doors to your house, right? It's a little fancier than just one door. I don't know why, but it is. So then I'm just gonna size down. So now these two pieces need some DSP on them, and then the middle needs um, some paper. So I'm really just sizing things down about a quarter of an inch, at least on the front. Let me see here. I don't even I think I have everything else cut. I will tell you right now what the measurements are in case you want to know and don't want to wait for the blog. Um, so again, beautiful DSP. You really could use, you know, use them interchangeably. I just kind of chose to use this. We'll put them on either, we'll put them on the opposite sides again. And then I really wanted them to pop off of that um, old olive. So I'm putting them up on black that is just slightly larger. So the black rectangles are five by three and three quarters. Okay. And then the DSP that you've put on the front of it is three and a half by four and three quarters. So it's cut down a quarter and let's just glue those together. This one really, once you get the pieces cut, um, it's just a lot of gluing. Hey, Carla, I'm so glad to see you. And I've been thinking about Teddy Noel and I hope she's doing okay, along with Teddy Noel's mom and dad and grandma um, and great grandma and everybody actually. <laughs> Teddy Noel's family, I should say. <laughs> Karma, I mean, Carla had um, got a baby granddaughter right around Christmas time. That was her gift. And um, I can't wait to see a picture of her because I think she just sounds like a little sweet thing. So we're sending her extra love and hugs right now. Okay, and then this side also, it's a little variegated. Um, and no, it just looks like a solid color of um, Poppy Parade. It's variegated when it's a whole 12 by 12. You can see that more easily. So those just get popped up. I'm not popped up, I'm sorry, just glued. And then I'm gonna glue them flat on the front because the middle is what's going to have um, have some dimensionals on it. Oh, she's doing great. I'm so glad to hear that. Kathy Strange, are you still on here? And I've been thinking about your Gary too. Uh, there's a lot of Gary husbands, but I've been thinking about your Gary and um, 
I was really just hoping he's doing fantastic. Hoping he's doing great. And I hope that you're getting some rest with your little Gracie. <laughs> she has a little new newish little dog, right, Kathy? Newish. Came to your family. And um, she's probably quite a little blessing and a little a little helper. A little emotional helper. So I know mine are, oh my gosh. Even though they pee pee on the rug, right? Or allegedly, I guess nobody, nobody copped to it. Okay, so now inside, just doing black. And, oh, okay, the measurements I gave you, I'm sorry, those measurements I gave you previously, that's for the inside. <laughs> I knew that wasn't the right measurement when I was saying it. Okay, the outside, the little rectangles on the outside are um, two and an eighth by five and three eighths. Anyway, it'll be up on um, you can you can go to the go to the blog and it'll be a lot clearer, right? Um, I kind of still have the thermostat on my mind. I'm trying not to think of it, but I do have the thermostat on my mind because the house is very silent right now and the furnace should be on. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, let's see. This is one reason why I'm glad I live in quote unquote the city so that um, I can still pop on up to Home Depot and um, hopefully, you know what I would love is if they have the exact same thermostat that I put in, I don't know, it's been several years ago, but maybe they still have the same one and I can just pop the unit in and I don't have to even rewire it. That would be really cool. It's probably a fantasy, pipe dream, whatever, but I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna assume that that's gonna be fine. If not, um, I guess I'm gonna be doing a little bit of wiring tonight and that's okay too. All right. Back to cards. So look at this. It's just so sharp to have black and white and then the brights and the bright, this flirty flamingo is the bright I'm referring to, but I love black and white and the brights. So very fun. Okay, now this is a regular piece of cardstock. If you are going to use Whisper White Thick to make your belly band, I really suggest that, oh shoot, it is, let's see. Time is it? 810. Okay, I'm gonna do this really quickly and then I'm gonna have to pop off, you guys. Um, but if you're using a piece of Whisper White Thick, I suggest that you take it to either the Scoring Pal or your paper cutter and um, score it that way. But when you're just using regular cardstock, really, I think the best way to do this is to actually fold it around the project. Here's why. Because even though you can score things very carefully, um, what do I wanna say? The thickness of this card is going to change the scoring dimensions. And you don't really know that within, you know, sometimes it'll make it, then you'll make it too tight if you just go by the simple measurement on the across the front of the card. So um, that's why I don't recommend doing that. And then I'm gonna cut a little bit off so that when you finish doing this, what you want is you want it to end somewhere where you're gonna put this on the front and hide it, okay? And so I can see already that it looks like my ends, like maybe I was just a little bit short that's okay. It doesn't matter because for one thing, the card doesn't sit flat down like that. The card sits semi open. And for another thing, people are going to be so stunned by this beautiful color combo. They don't care. It almost looks like it's just a little bit of this design, which is really fun. Okay. In a nutshell, I stamped and punched this heart in Florida Flamenco. And then I always have little scraps of the paper from when I trim the paper down. This is Flirty Flamingo also, and I stamped in um, Poppy Parade, okay? And then I stamped 
the inside in Flirty Flamingo because I was really just trying to do a whole mix of the colors. And then I used for the embellishments these um, For My Heart faceted gems. And the one thing that's really cool about these is, um, is that these are flat on the back and they give you a lot of surface area to put a little bit of glue so they don't get all, you know, it doesn't get all over. You could even put a glue dot, a mini glue dot on it. And so that's really that card. I'm not going to finish it because, as you know, uh, I've got to make a quick trip to the store. Um, okay, listen, I appreciate all of you so much. And thank you for joining in tonight um, on, on what is, for some of you, a very cold night. And um, I always appreciate you, but I really had fun with these cards. And I, I um, welcome and encourage you to watch the replay and take screenshots if you would like. Uh, you know that you can always case cards. You just need to give credit where credit is due. So whenever you're doing that with any designer, I'm not just talking about my cards, but um, anyway, that's always a nice courtesy. And otherwise, case away, you guys. And don't forget about um, the great retreat in a box that Jen and I have going on right now. Um, and again, you can see all of the details for that on my website. You can call me or text me or um, you can, you've already gotten it at least once in your email. Okay, thanks so much, everybody. I will be posting uh, my blog and I'll post some stills of these pictures. I don't know about tonight, but <laughs> this weekend, right? Uh, let's see here. And then I have these two. Look at this fun, fun little stash of cards. You could put all these together in our acetate boxes and then you can have a really lovely little set of cards to give to somebody. That, oh, that's a stunning set of cards. Okay, everyone, have a great night. And uh, I appreciate you so much. And I will get to your comments. It probably won't be tonight, though. Depends on how fast I can install the thermostat. <laughs> okay. Have a good night, everybody. See you next week.